My name is Karen Janke. I'm the chair of the Consciousness and Transformative Studies program at John F. Kennedy University. And today my topic is the healing role of dreams in PTSD. We think of trauma as being sort of the exceptional thing that happens, that disrupts life experience. But the truth is, at least in our time, trauma is becoming a more regular experience. It's becoming a more common experience. If you look at the number of studies of trauma in the 1980s, starting I think in the 1980s, they just shot up like a rocket. Uh, and it was because the phenomenon of trauma was becoming much more common. In the early part of the 20th century, trauma is something people, well, forever, trauma is something people kind of want to forget. Um, the, even the person experiencing it wants to forget it, which does relate to what I'll say about dreams. So the culture also wants to forget trauma. And it seems that after wars, when the combat, uh, members of combat are coming back home, and there's a lot of PTSD brought back into uh, the collective awareness, then the culture has to remember, oh yes, this is part of the human experience. So the wars, the wars, actually the trauma first got named after World War I called shell shock and because of the terrible trauma of the veterans in the, or the, the members of the military in the, in the trenches. And then again after World War II, um, and of course very big in the public consciousness after the Vietnam War, uh, which was you know had its own issues with being an unpopular war. And so I think sometime after uh, the Vietnam War, it started becoming much more aware in the in the collective consciousness. It didn't go underground. It would go underground in these pre. Uh, interwar periods and then surface again after after these major wars. Uh, then also uh, sexual trauma of women and the women's movement started bringing, bringing trauma to light again. And, you know, of course, now we have a lot of uh, terrorism trauma, crime trauma, you know, there's many, many kinds of trauma. Domestic violence uh, is, a, you know, another form that has gotten a lot more attention. So I think the incidence of trauma has increased dramatically over the 20th century. You could almost say the 20th century was the century where trauma started becoming a very, fairly common human experience. And even people who don't have a dramatic, traumatic experience, there still can be the, the smaller traumas. You know, a kid, uh, starts to drown in a swimming pool or, you know, the, the, the ordinary, what's more called the ordinary traumas. So what, uh, what I'm interested in is the way that, okay, first of all, what happens in a trauma is that a trauma is an overwhelming experience. It's an, it's a, it's an experience of threat where one's um, life is threatened and one's survival is threatened. And what happens in the psyche when in, in a traumatic moment is that it's like the psyche steps, the, the, what I call the manager in the psyche steps in and says, okay, you're not gonna worry about the, the feelings. You're not gonna worry about the emotions of this event. We just want you to focus on surviving the event. And so there's a bracketing there's a bracketing of the emotional experience of trauma, and it's just pushed, set aside. It's like, it's how people respond in an emergency. Just get the task done, don't feel anything, right? And so there's this automatic mechanism that steps in to not cause us to have to process the experience at an emotional level. And so the person hopefully survives the trauma, and then later, once, they have established safety and there's no more danger in their life, it may be that the psyche takes a different approach. It says, okay, you're safe now. Now we want you to process the emotions that got bracketed previously. And one of the main mechanisms for doing that is our dreams. Because if the person is still managing the trauma in the same way, keep it out of light, 
push it away, repress the emotions, then, um, then the dreams are trying to bring that to the surface. And why do they do that? They do that because I believe, and it's not just my belief, I would, I would say most Jungians would say that there is a, a wisdom function in the psyche that wants the person to be whole. And as long as this traumatic experience has been bracketed and shoved aside, it takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of psychic energy to keep it out of consciousness. So the dreams in the service of this wisdom part of the psyche bring the, bring the trauma back in the form of a, what's known as a PTSD dream. And what's special about the PTSD dream from regular dreams is that PTSD dreams have an extremely high level of intensity and they repeat. So if you don't get the, basically recurring dreams happen, whether they're PTSD dream, D dreams or regular dreams, dreams recur when the person isn't getting the message. There's an important message from this deeper wisdom function in the psyche and the, the waking person isn't able to process the message, doesn't want to understand it, doesn't want to face whatever the message is. So, uh, so the PTSD dreams come back and they come back in force with a lot of emotional intensity. And so they're frightening to the person. Um, and, but by facing those dreams and working through the symbolism in the dreams and the emotions that they bring, what happens is the person recovers that psychic energy that's being spent, kind of wasted in repressing the experience and repressing the memory of it and the energy behind the trauma. They recover that uh, psychic energy and they increase their capacity to hold intense experiences, their own and those of other people. So by working through those dreams, they actually uh, expand, there's an expansion of the personality to accommodate this intense experience, this challenging experience that's at the edge of life and death. 